This shirt makes me look like an accountant or something, huh? Should I go buttoned? or just like, you know, one button less, you know, I'm just, what's up? So this is a Canon EOS R and this is also an EOS R. The only big complaint I keep hearing is that it crops in at 4K. We hate cropping in because it uses less of the sensor and also less of the lens. So generally speaking, less crop, the better, right? So this is what it looks like in HD. And if we turn on image stabilization, it crops in a little bit. And here's what that looks like. So you see that, how everything kind of closed in a little bit. So before and after. And now we're on 4K, same exact lens, but we're in much tighter. And now we got image stabilization on here as well. So comparing this to full frame and cropped, full frame, nice and wide and cropped again. That's where this comes in. This is the Metabone Speed Booster. And this is something I've been waiting for for a while. And it's now here. So lately I've been using this RF lens. So you can't really use a speed booster, but a lot of people are using EF lenses. So instead of going from your camera to the lens, you go from your camera body to an adapter and we can slap on our favorite EF lenses. Now this speed booster is essentially the same thing as this right here. It's an adapter, it adapts the RF lens to the EF lens, but inside are some optics to kind of change things up a little bit. It's gonna take your EF lens and kind of widen it out to counter the effects of a crop. It's gonna widen it out by 0.71, so what's it look like if I attach this onto this camera. So now we got the speed booster on here. Two things have changed. One, we are now overexposed. And also we are out wider, not as wide as when we were full frame. So this is full frame. And also when we tack on a speed booster, it's gonna take that light from the lens and narrow it in almost like a laser. So it's actually gonna make the image brighter. So let me correct this exposure. So now that we're shooting 4K with a relatively minor crop, is this a great 4K vlogging solution. I got my 16 to 35 EF lens here. It's the F4 version with image stabilization. I'm going to slap this on here and let's take it for a spin. This is a good spot because you can just drive right up to it and then you have a nice little view. So it's great. We walk like 20 feet and then it looks like we completed a ginormous height. So I'm still on that 16 to 35 F4 right now and notice I'm a little bit overexposed. There's one downside to the speed booster is if you find yourself without an ND filter like me right now, you can't close down to F22. You can only stop down to F 16 because again that speed booster adds more light onto that sensor. So I'm a little bit overexposed. Only way for me to get less exposure is to crank that shutter speed a little bit. So right around there, now I'm at 180th. F16, ISO at 100. So yeah, when you have a speed booster on, having an ND filter is a little bit more important. Because if I didn't have the speed booster, I could just go all the way to F22 on the iris and I don't have to change the shutter speed at all. So as of right now, the only two cameras that have the RF mount, which this speed booster goes to, is this e EOS R and also the RP, which Sam has. Now, if you have it on the EOS R like I do right now, the crop factor is now 1.24. It's not completely full frame, but it's much better than, you know, the crop of 1.7 that we were getting. Now, if you have the EOS RP like Sam has, it's actually only a 1.15 X crop. So if you have an RP, it's actually gonna look a little bit wider than this, which is good. Downside is you don't have dual pixel autofocus on 4K. Two things I wanna test out with the speed booster is does it maintain pretty good autofocus? And also image stabilization. Does that continue to work with the lens even with this adapter on? So let's try some out. All right, test number one, image stabilization. I have the 100 mil on here and it is pretty shaky without image stabilization. I'm gonna pop it on, see if it actually does anything. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh my God, so much smoother. Okay, good. It looks like I'm holding the camera stable, but I'm really not, I'm kind of shaking. See again, if I turn it off, yeah, I immediately see how much it shakes. So good news, if you have optical stabilization on your lens, it still works. Now let's test the autofocus. So I've got the focus on Sam. All right, I've got it on autofocus. I'm not manually doing anything. It seems to be holding stop there, nice. Let me focus on the background real quick. Yep, back there, good. Back on Sam. Yeah, still pretty snappy. I don't really see a lag. Since we have a macro lens on here, we might as well take advantage of it. Sam, are you ready for your close up? Oh. Let's do it. Oh my God, look at that. Actually, this probably actually looks pretty good in 4K, huh? I can see every one of your eyebrows. So yeah, everything on the lens feels good. It doesn't feel like I have some weird adapter. Everything, including the stabilization and autofocus seems pretty good on this lens. The big question is, are you guys noticing that it's sharper now that we're shooting actual 4K? Does this look awesome? 
or not really. I wanna say my favorite thing about the speed booster is the extra low light performance you get out of the lenses. So this is an F2.8 lens on here and that's what the F-stop is. But since I got that speed booster on there, check this out, I get to just kinda of go whoop open up that lens a little bit extra it's quite a bit it's a full stop pretty much so yeah this is 2.8 and this is 2.0 so that boost is all coming from the speed booster so that's definitely nice that you don't have to crank that iso i also tried out a vintage lens that's an f 1.4 and this is how that looked like shooting with that speed booster with an f 1.4 lens in low light was awesome i barely had to go over 160 iso which is actually insane you're taking a fast lens and then boosting get speed even more so that was cool anyways i'm here in cabo mexico it's christmas today actually merry christmas well you're probably watching this after but Merry Christmas. Now check this out. With most lenses, the Metabone Speed Booster will communicate with the camera telling it that it is now a cropped in lens, right? So even if you're shooting in HD or 4K, it will crop into the sensor. But with some lenses, it doesn't. For example, this is the 16 to 35 f2.8, but it's the second generation version. So this one doesn't necessarily tell the camera, hey, crop into the sensor. So I can actually go into full HD and pop back out to full frame. And this this is what it looks like. Now, you will see a lot of vignetting. See all that around the corners because, you know, the speed booster isn't designed to work with a full frame sensor. But check this out. Look how wide I can get. What? This looks like a GoPro. What's crazy right now is I can see your whole body. Nuh uh. I could see your toes. Your the lens is what, 12 inches away, a foot away? Yeah. This is seriously a straight up fisheye lens now. <laughs> how far away do you think my hand is currently? from the lens. Foot, six inches, three inches, or an inch. Dun, 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 da, da, dun. I could actually touch the lens. Look, my finger's actually touching the lens. I shouldn't do this, but look at this. My finger's literally touching the lens right now. I've got an ND filter on here, so I got a, a little extra layer of, you know, protection. I can wipe it down, so don't scream at me. But I'm touching the lens right now, look. This is what it looks like if I touch this lens. Like this is barely over an inch away from the lens right here. That's crazy. I need some lens wipes. <laughs> like I can't really think of anything quite like that. What are you doing? There's like these little pieces that are like pink. I think it's fun picking out the pink pieces. It's like a treasure hunt. This is what I gotta do when you talk to the camera. I gotta keep myself occupied. <laughs> <laughs> now obviously this vignetting is gonna be an issue making it unusable in most cases, but let's say you're shooting for strictly like Instagram content where you're to get a one by one extraction out of this footage it's kind of cool because you're recording and capturing the entire illumination area of the lens why are you looking at me like that because i found a rock for you <laughs> let me see it's a heart oh it's a heart yes if i was shooting a one by one video i would totally shoot like this opposed to like this which is the mode that it's meant to be shot in but you know if i'm gonna crop off the sides the vignetting doesn't really matter so i might as well just punch back out like this and i don't know it's just so interesting to me because it's like it looks like a fish eye but it has qualities of you know a f 2.0 lens that's crazy the angle itself is whoa no I got, I got a football thrown at me. <laughs> if you have no idea what I'm talking about, basically like this fisheye look that you see out of GoPros and stuff, you can get this, but you can't really get a shallow depth of field. So the background can never really get blurry, but look how blurry I can get the background to look with this super wide angle. I don't know, it's just like, I just never seen something like this before, so I'm really amused right now. Like I have the Canon L series fisheye lens and it looks nothing like this. Like this is really cool. See, even Carrie's rock collection looks cool with this setup here. I also got some shots with a vintage 85 millimeter f1.4 lens and the depth of field was just razor thin. It was really cool and pretty unique. Like I said, this isn't really a feature of the speed booster because it's not really designed to do this, but it's definitely cool. I've just been shooting, you know, kind of casual vlogs but for that specific type of shooting, I never really felt like I needed a speed booster. I'd probably be using it more if 4K was a much bigger priority for me, but you know, I've talked about it in the past. I don't really care that much. Mainly because I know these videos are primarily gonna end up on YouTube and it's gonna be compressed by YouTube anyways. And even with the speed booster, I am still dealing with a little bit of a crop opposed to what I'm using right now. I'm using a 15 to 35 millimeter RF lens. Like here's a quick example of a shot in HD and a shot in 4K 
with the speed booster. And there is a difference, but honestly, by the time it goes through YouTube compression under normal usage, it's not a huge deal. On bigger displays with less compression, it is gonna be a little bit more noticeable. But again, if you're going for YouTube, that 4K really doesn't matter that much. I still shoot most of my stuff in HD. And you know, that 4K crop isn't always a bad thing. You know, it actually came in handy a little bit earlier. We went whale watching and I only brought this 15 to 35 millimeter lens because I wanted to do some vlogging, get Carrie's reaction to the whales because it was a big deal for her. She was very excited to see the whales. But I had a wide angle lens, so I popped it into 4K just to get a little bit of extra resonance Solution, so that way I can punch into the whales a little bit more and also I got a little bit of crop to give me a little bit of that extra boost You know, I should have brought a telephoto lens. I know I messed up <laughs> But you know there are times where you know that 4k crop was like, oh, I'm glad I have this option But on the other hand if I was shooting for a client a lot of times I do like to shoot in 4k to give them You know 4k delivery then the speed booster starts to make a lot of sense I think if you have an EOS R or an RP and that 4k crop really bothers you it makes the 4k option on the camera much much more reasonable. Not perfect, but reasonable. And it's by Metabones. I think they're the original makers of speed boosters. And whoa, there's a paraglider right there. Whoa, whoa. I don't know, do you see it? But yeah, Metabones, I've had a couple of their speed boosters in the past. They're definitely one of the most reputable speed booster brands, I think. But I have been keeping my eyes on all the rumors of the next, you know, version of the EOS R, like the pro version of it that should be announced fairly soon if the rumors are correct. And if that comes with a no crop 4K, then that kind of solves the issue entirely. Anyways, I've been sitting out here for like 15 minutes. I think I just got crazy sunburn while recording this bit. Holy crap, this sun here is intense. It's very Christmassy here, huh? So another thing that's cool, RF lenses have, you know, the zoom, the focus, but also a third wheel for, you know, custom controls. I have mine set to the ISO control, but EF lenses don't have, you know, but the Metabones adapter has a wheel on there, so you can use that as the third wheel. Anyways, shall we wrap this up by reading a few comments? Yes, the shutter speed is at 120th of a second, which is why it looks so choppy. I had to do it though, because these LED lights terrible flicker even at 125th of a second you see that flicker 30th of a frame I even at 60 which usually fixes it nothing so no matter what shutter speed, I tried it all trust me I don't want to be shooting at 120th of a shutter looking like this potato jet says I'm gonna get into shape a shape of a potato <laughs> very funny I, I that's that called sarcasm huh? I thought that was funny <laughs> I am starting to diet but uh, we're in Mexico right now like you can't say no to tacos that's just not a thing Right? So it's like, what, what do you do? It's gonna happen though. Carrie and I were just talking about it. Carrie's over there. She's hiding. She's camera shy right now. But we're both planning on hitting our ideal weight by March 31st, which is our dating anniversary. So you watch out. I'm gonna be so ripped. And once I am, I won't be hiding in the hot tub. <laughs> See, Potato Jet's attraction. I feel like his brain stream of consciousness just goes straight to his mouth without editing. So half the time I'm like, damn, that feels like some of my voice in my head but it's coming out of the kid from up. Like I said, March 31st. I'm not gonna look like the kid from up anymore. The Matt 222 says, I just binge watched your videos at this point, especially with the discovery of your new channel. Yeah, I got a new little vlog channel. It's kind of an experimental channel. I'm not gonna say it's a good channel, because it's, again, it's experimental. By the way, Matt 222, oh, you're the guy that emailed me. Hold up, hold up. So a while ago, I'm pretty sure you commented that you were working on a deep fake of me and the kid from up. A deep fake's like, you know, where you superimpose somebody's face on somebody else's face in video. Like in photography, you can Photoshop someone's head on somebody else's very easily, but in video, it's a lot more difficult. So when he said he was working on one with me and the kid from up, I was like, huh, very funny. But then he sends me this email, which I don't know what any of this technical looking stuff, does, but it looks legit. And it's photos of me and then the kid from up. What is that? What? What is that? The one up top, I look like that Pokemon Ditto. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. I look like Ditto trying to impersonate me, you know? And that is just scary. That's what I would look like if I don't start my diet right now. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Matthew. Like, I want to say, stop it right now. Stop messing around with my face. That's weird. But at the same time, I'm so curious what you're going to do. So maybe, I, I don't know. Anyhow, thanks for tuning in. That's it for today. Goodbye.